Hello, everybody, and welcome to the next uh, technology class here at the Santa Clara City Library. Um, today, we're going to be talking about ChatGPT and Google's Bard, um, doing a comparison between them and showing you how you can use them and what they're good for. Uh, my name is John, and I'm going to be walking you through this class today. I'm an employee in the Technology Center here at the library, um, and just want to point out that we're covering ChatGPT and BARD just because these are two very popular tools that people would be interested in learning about. I'm not affiliated with either OpenAI or Google, who are the companies that produce these two tools. This is going to be a 35-minute program. We're going to be walking through a comparison and some examples. If you have any questions along the way, you can use the Q&A feature at the bottom of your screen to type out your question. And once we get to the end, we'll go through your questions and um, answer them then. Uh, if we do run out of time, though, uh, you can come to the Technology Center in the Central Park Library. And there's going to be someone there um, anytime that we're open who can give you one-on-one -on -one help with any future questions you might have. So with that said, we can get right into the class. <laughs> Today, we're going to be talking about ChatGPT versus Google Bard and doing a comparison. This is a sort of a follow up class on a previous one that we did focusing just on ChatGPT. But if you missed that one, don't worry, we're going to be covering everything you need to know um, and all of the basics to get started with using either of these tools. So to start off with covering the similarities between these two tools, they're very similar in concept. They're both websites that allow you to type in questions and it will generate responses in a conversational way using AI models. These models have been trained on massive amounts of text data from books, websites, social media, all different places. And what that means is it's essentially a computer program that looked at all of this text and figured out kind of how English works and how um, all of the information is there. And it uses this to answer your questions or give you help on whatever you ask it. It's not perfect, however. Uh, it can produce inaccurate information. So when you're asking it for facts or information, it's always important to double check using a separate source to make sure that it's giving you something correct. Well, these two services are pretty similar. They're both, you know, conversational AI things. They do have some differences, and we can go over those now. ChatGPT, for example, will only do text input and text responses, whereas Bard allows you to do text and also image input. So if you wanted to show it a picture and ask it some questions about it, uh, you could do that, and it would look at the picture and use that to try and answer your question. Another difference is that ChatGPT is trained on information from January of 2022 and earlier, which means if you try and ask it about a current event, say, you know, who won a certain sports game last week, it wouldn't be able to tell you that because it only knows information of events before January of 2022. Whereas BARD has its knowledge kept up to date, it's continually being fed with new information. So when you ask it a question, you can ask it current events like that sports game example, and it would be able to tell you because its information is constantly being updated. A uh, final difference is that ChatGPT doesn't have internet access. So when it's giving you its answers, it's only going off of its what it remembers about the data that it was trained on. Whereas Bard can search up the internet the same way that you or I might Google something and it can use the articles and websites that it finds to help answer your question. So that's a couple of key differences between BARD and the free version of ChatGPT. Uh, we're not gonna go into it too much, but I do wanna touch on, there's a subscription version of ChatGPT as well. And that one comes with more features than the free version. It has a more capable model and it also supports image inputs. You can do image creation as well, and as well as doing web browsing, which is something that BARD does. And then it has additional tools for stuff like data analysis and coding. But as this is a paid subscription and not the free version, um, most people are going to be interested in the free version of this. So that's what we're going to be focusing on for the rest of this class. And finally, the last thing I want to touch on in this overview before we dive into the 
um, specific tools and showing how to use them is the privacy and the ethics of all of this. I mentioned that both of these models are trained on massive amounts of data. And some of that data is actually the conversations that you have with these tools. So when you ask it questions and it gives you answers, that exchange is used to train and improve future versions of the models. And for that reason, it's important that you don't share any personal information or identifying information in, in these chats. Um, but if that makes you uncomfortable, you can disable this feature. And I'll show you how to do that with both ChatGPT and BARD. Um, however, that does come with some caveats and reduced functionality, which we'll look at when we get into these tools. And then finally, as these are both very powerful tools, in order to prevent misuse, um, they have some limitations on what they will say. Uh, you usually won't come into these limitations too often, um, but if you ask it to do something that it thinks could be potentially harmful or dangerous, it might just tell you that, like, hey, I can't answer that. But now that we've gone over this overview, um, we can take a second to dive into the actual um, services. So what I have right here is um, the BARD website. First time you go to it, it's at bard.google.com. It'll look like this. You'll just press this Try BARD button and uh, accept all of the terms. And then once you do that, it takes you right into it. And it says, you know, BARD is an experiment. Um, you know, some weird responses and some bugs might happen along the way, but we'll take a look at that as we go through it. First thing we can do is just, um, you know, maybe ask it to introduce itself. So I will ask Bard just to introduce itself right here. And we see in this main center window in the middle, it um, types out its response, it says, hi, I'm Bard, a large language model. And then it gives some little bullet points talking about what it can do and what it is. The way I asked it the question was by typing in this text box at the bottom of the screen. This is where you'll be typing in all of your questions and you know, things you want to tell it. Some other things you'll see about the interface is on the left side, you have this panel here where as we create new chats using this new chat button, it will show all of the history of our previous chats in a list here, and you can go back to them and take a look at any time. Um, some other buttons is like the settings up in the top. Uh, I mentioned that the um, conversations that you have are going to be used to train future versions of the model. So if you wanted to disable that, um, the way you would do that is go up to this clock symbol, click on BARD activity, and then it takes you to this settings page where you can choose to turn off the activity and that will opt you out of having your chats used to train future versions. The downside though is that the chat history will be kept for a shorter amount of time but that's, that's there if you um, would like it. I'm, however, just going to leave that on and we'll switch back to this. And we see that Bard has given us, you know, sort of a brief overview about what it is, but, you know, let's say I'm still not totally sure about what I can use this for. I mentioned that this is a conversation, which means I'm not limited to asking only one question. I can ask it some follow-ups in this same conversation thread. So I'll ask it, what are some ways that it can help me? And you see it's going to continue this conversation on after it thinks for a second and gives me some ways that it could help me. So like information and research, writing, translation. If you do coding or programming, it can help you with that. So you know all sorts of different things here. One thing that we could look at and see how it can do is um, you know, planning a trip. Uh, it's a pretty interesting use case of this. Like, let's say I was, um, you know, wanting to go to New York for a three-day trip, and I wasn't really sure what I wanted to do there. I just wanted it to um, give me some ideas for the things I could see. The way I can ask it that question is by clicking on the new chat button in the top left. What that'll do, just open up a new window for me to talk about. And we see that this previous one, it was automatically titled Introducing Bard is saved here in my recent chats for me to go back to later. But for now, let's ask it that question about helping me plan a three-day trip to New York. And then once it does its thinking, 
it starts to outline a quick itinerary for me. And something that we see, um, I mentioned chat or uh, Bard here can access the internet. And as it's doing this and it says I can, you know, visit Central Park, it gives me a quick link for me to learn more about Central Park. Same with the Museum of Natural History, it gives me a link there. And for each of these, it's going to give me a link where I can go to, you know, an article and explore some more information about it. But we see that if we scroll through here, it's given a sort of a rough outline of things we could do over these three days. And then it gives a couple more pointers here. Um, but let's say this is a little bit too much, like, I don't know, museums and stuff, and say I wanted to maybe eat food. What we can do um, is come down to the bottom here and clarify that, you know, restaurants and going on walks is some stuff that I'd like to do more of. And we can ask it a question of including more of that, and it will rework the itinerary here to um, include more of the stuff that we're looking for. So we see it starts off with places where we can get pastries and coffee. It plans out some walks for us to do. And um, if we still weren't satisfied with this and we wanted to look at some more things we could do, we could continue to um, enter prompts and refining the suggestions it's giving us to uh, you know, give you some good ideas of something you might want to do on a trip. Uh, so that was how you can use it to, you know, generate ideas for what you might want to do on a trip or planning an itinerary. Some other stuff it can do is helping you with your writing. Um, you know, emails and writing emails to companies and organizations. Sometimes it's kind of stressful and we don't really know, you know, what the format is or like how we should organize that, what the style is. So you could even use chat or Bard here to, um, help you like formalize an email and proofread it and get the style right. Uh, so for an example, let's say there's some event by an organization on you know December 16th that I was going to go to and I wanted to register, but I wasn't sure how to do that. I could write up an email that I have right here. Um, just like, I want to sign up for an event. How can I do this and find out more info? Thanks which is very concise to the point, you know, not proper grammar or capitalization. Um, and then I can just ask Bard if it could proofread the email for me and fix the grammar and the style. And when I give it this, it'll help me rework that email in a way that might be, you know, more formal and proper to send to an organization if I wanted to, you know, have them send me more information about it. So you see, it has the same information, you know, a thing on December 16th, and I want more info. Yeah, it gives me the sign off at the bottom but it's structured very nicely in a well put together email. Um, so something like that, it can help you figure out what the style is and like the formalities of how to do something like that. Um, another thing we can look at, I mentioned that uh, Bard has access to current events as well as the internet. So we could start another chat up here and then um, maybe ask it a question about what is the latest image from the James Webb Space Telescope, which is a new space telescope that NASA sent up and it's been taking cool pictures. Let's say I want to figure out what the newest image that that one has taken. So I can just ask it that question and it'll do some searches on the internet to try and figure out what the latest you know, images it's gotten. And we see it's gotten us a reply here. There was an image taken on November 15th, so very recent because it continuously has its information updated. And then it provides a link for us here where we can um, go and read an article about this new um, image in science that the telescope has offered. And it did that by searching the internet for um, this question to gather information, and then it included that in its response to us. Um, but let's say this wasn't really exactly what you were looking for. You know, this is, um, looks like maybe like an artist image and not a, a picture that James Webb took. So 
what we could look at is these drafts. And this is other similar responses that Bard is creating for us um, that are like slightly different, might include some other information. So if you ask it a question and you're not satisfied with one of its answers, you can go through these other drafts and click on them and see if it has other information. So we see this one has a different picture and it's a different article. And we see that this is another image that James Webb took, which um, you know might be more like what you were looking for. And you can access that by clicking this view other drafts button and look at the different responses that it's generated to your same question. Okay, um, and then I mentioned also that BARD can take image inputs um, that can be used for anything you might want it to look at an image for. But one thing that might be useful is taking a screenshot of text and then actually transcribing the text for you. So if I were to just take a screenshot of um, this right here um, and I wanted to convert that to text, I could ask it to transcribe that for me. So I would just, I used snipping tool just a second ago um, to copy the image and then I'll just uh, right click and paste it here. And then I can ask it, to please transcribe this image. And then it'll send that image and, oh, yeah, there we go. It'll send that image and um, transcribe it and hopefully convert it into the text. Yep, you see right here, this is the exact same text that I just copied from this uh, paragraph right here. So that can be useful if you wanted to, um, take an article that maybe you couldn't copy directly and somebody just sent you a picture of, but you wanted to like copy the text so you can edit it however you want, this is a tool that can help you transcribe the text in an image. Okay, um, this has been sort of an overview of the major features of BARD. We can take a second now to go over to ChatGBT and show you that it has some differences, but overall it's a very similar program. So this is the first page you'll see when you log in. You can go to chat.openai.com and then just press the sign up or sign in button if you either need to make an account or just log in. And then it'll give you this little information overview. You say, okay, let's go. And then just looking at a brief tour of the interface, you see it's very similar to BARD. We have the message box at the very bottom and this main center area is going to fill in with our chats as we have them. This bar on the left side is going to include the conversation history that we can go back to anytime. Uh, and we can just get started. Uh, I mentioned that ChatGPT only knows information from January of 2022 and earlier. And that timeline is every once in a while, it'll be refreshed to be a little bit more recent, but it's always been a year or two um, before the current day. So it won't be able to tell us something like what the latest James Webb picture is, but if we wanted to ask it, it's, ask it it anyway, it would just remind us that, you know, its last knowledge update was January 22. So, you know, just an example of something that is a little bit different from ChatGPT and BARD. Um, but if we wanted to ask it a different question that didn't rely on current information, we could do that just by clicking on the new chat button, which is in the same spot that it was for BARD. And then maybe let's ask it the itinerary information about the three-day New York trip. And we'll see that it does a very similar response to BARD. It plans out the day-by-day -day itinerary, giving us some events that we could do in the morning, afternoon, and evening. And then you notice the one difference is that it's not giving us links to articles about um, the uh, various things that it's talking to us about. And that's because again, ChatGPT doesn't have access to the internet. It's only going off of what it remembers from its training data. But again, this is a chat and not just a single question that we ask. So if we wanted to ask it follow-up questions, like how we said we wanted to try different kinds of restaurants and things like that, you can ask it that and it'll sort of rework the itinerary to incorporate um, our follow-up questions. 
you know, just like Bard does the same sort of thing. So with reference to this, it's more just personal preference um, for whether you prefer Bard or ChatGPT because they're both very similar in this. Uh, one other thing you can do in mean, both Bard and ChatGPT is edit responses. So instead of just asking follow-up questions, you can go up to your previous questions and just edit the history of a conversation. So let's say, you know, we asked it to different kinds of restaurants and we wanted it to um, include more information about walks. But let's say we wanted to go to museums as well. So we could just go here and edit this response to say walks and museums. And then once we've edited it, we can press save and submit. And you see that now ChatGPT is going to generate a response that incorporates museums as well after we've made our edit. So we scroll through down here and we see that, you know, some food, some museums at the MoMA and some walks. And if you ever do that and you say like, actually, I liked what it did with that first response better, you can go back to the response that you edited and you see there's these little arrows left and right. So we can go to the first response of two, and this is back to the original one, or we can press the right arrow and go to the next one that includes, um, you know, that we wanted to go to museums and bring that response back. And you can just switch back and forth between these whenever you want um, as you go through the conversation. Now, you can do the same thing with Bard. If we go to the chat history and we go back to this um, three-day New York trip, and we come back here and there's the same response that we asked it. Again, we go to the pencil icon to edit text and you'll click this right here and we can write that we wanna see museums here as well and then just press update. And now it'll regenerate its response to include that we wanted to see some stuff about museums. And we actually see real quick here, it's searching up Google Maps. Um, that's something that it can do as it has access to the internet to try and find you know, good museums that we could go to. Okay, and actually looks like this one, um, instead of a day-by-day -day itinerary, it more gave us a list of different museums and restaurants to go to, which could be helpful for you as well. Um, one difference I do want to highlight, though, is that now that we've changed this response to include that we want to see museums, Bard doesn't give you a way to go back to the previous response, like the original one. You now just have this new one, and you need to go here and maybe edit it back to delete that if you wanted to go back to the previous one. Whereas when we're in ChatGPT over here, we get the arrows left and right that allow you to toggle um, whether you want to look at the original response or whether you want to use your updated one. Okay, that's about all of the um, practical examples I had prepared. So I think we can go through some Q&A and um, you know, help answer some people's questions that they have about these services. All right, thank you, John. Um, so we have a couple of questions, but um, if you want to type them in again, just go down to the Q&A button at the bottom of the screen and uh, we have plenty of time to answer them. So get them in. Um, the first question, I actually have one, John. You showed us how we can turn off the setting that lets the service keep our information on Bard. Uh, can you show us how to do that on ChatGPT as well? Right, yeah. So when we're in ChatGPT in this main window, you can go to the um, where it says your name in the very bottom left and click right there. And that will open up a window that has a settings option. So then you click on settings. And then under the data controls section, you'll go there and where it says chat history and training data, you can just turn this toggle off and that will um, disable the usage of your conversations to train future versions of the model. However, you also see that um, unsafe chats will be deleted within 30 days. And by turning this off, then your chats won't sync across different devices. But this is an option here if you wanted to turn it off for ChatGPT. It's the same sort of thing as what I showed in Bard. Excellent. Thank you. OK, uh, the next question I have, uh, someone is asking, will this uh, class be recorded for viewing later? 
And the answer, of course, is yes. Uh, we are going to put it up on our YouTube channel um, in a day or two after the class is over, and it'll be up there along with all of our backlog of tech classes. And uh, anyone who attended or registered for this class will get a link to view it on YouTube. Um, the next question I have, and John, I will let you answer this one, um, is do we have to pay to use BARD and ChatGPT? Yeah, great question. So BARD is totally free. Um, you don't need to pay for any of the services on there. ChatGPT, like I covered a little bit in the slides, has a free version and a paid version. What I'm showing you right now is the completely free version. Um, and the paid version, you can look up information about it if you'd like, but everything I'm showing here is free for you to use. You just need to create an account. Perfect. Thank you. Uh, our next question, is there a way of fact-checking the a AI responses? Yeah, so there's no like automatic like built-in fact-checker, but you would fact-check these AI responses the same way that you would fact-check any information you hear. Um, the easiest way is to just go and do a Google search for it and look at sort of like what articles you find and what they're saying about it. Um, you know, for news information, you might want to look at reputable news outlets or look for some, uh, you know, re reliable sources for other sorts of information, sort of like in the field of whatever the fact is that you're trying to research. So for fact checking AI, it's the same steps that you do to fact check um, any fact that you hear online. Great, thank you. Um, our next question. Uh, can you do an example of Bard helping to create or modify a resume? Sure. Um, I don't have a resume ready, but what I can do is just ask it to generate a resume template for me, which could be just as helpful. And then, so I could ask it to just please generate a resume template. And then maybe we can go over some follow-up steps for how we can um, you know, modify this. Yep, so let, this looks like it's generating a template for marketing and education, but um, you know, let's say, I don't know, I'm you know, doing software and I wanna include stuff about various software projects. I could ask it to modify this resume and you know, in your conversation, you could copy and paste information from your own resume, but for here, I'll just use this template that it provided me. Um, so I can just say I'd like to include some software project I've worked on, and we'll see it's going to um, update that template to include some yeah, some little uh, sections where you can outline, um, you know, software projects in this example. But in your case, you could take the information from your resume and put it into the prompt area and have it help you rearrange your own resume. Pretty cool. Thank you. Uh, next up, someone is curious um, how these services go about selecting the answers they give you. The, the specific example they asked for is how does it select restaurants? Are they sponsored? Are they completely random? How do they determine what to show you? So there's a couple. Um, it's not sponsored as far as I'm aware, but it's also not entirely random. It's just sort of whatever restaurants its training data happens to include and mention in a favorable way. You know, I mentioned this has also seen a bunch of social media. So that includes stuff like Yelp reviews or if people are talking about various restaurants on you know, like Twitter or something. Um, so it's looking at all of that information to see which restaurants might be uh, you know, popular or favorable. And it's mostly just going on whatever seems popular for you know, my example where I just said restaurants. But then if you were to focus in and say that you really like you know, Mexican restaurants or you want to eat you know, Chinese food, it could then use your prompts to try and find more specific examples of restaurants that people have been, you know, talking about favorably. And that's the main way it uses to figure out which restaurants to um, include. 
And then in Bard's case, it also is probably doing a Google search for that. So then just whichever restaurants, you know, for in New York, in this case, happen to rise to the top of those Google search results on a site like, you know, Yelp or something. Excellent. That makes sense. Uh, next up, someone asks, can you make passive income using AI chat? And that kind of gets into an ethical gray area, but uh, John, go ahead. Yeah. So I know there are definitely some people who do that. I don't know much about, you know, what that looks like, or like Paul mentioned, the like ethics of that. Um, you could do some research online to try and see if there's something like that that, you know, interests you and might be something you're looking for. But, um, you know, making passive income isn't something that's immediately obvious or something that you're able to do with a tool like this. It's more just, you know, for research and helping you out with whatever it is that you're doing. All right. Uh, next question. Can you just one more time give us the URL to access BARD? Yeah. So BARD is at bard.google.com. Or if you just do a search for Google Bard, um, you'll be brought the link as well. And then in case people are wondering, ChatGBT is at chat.openai.com. Um, but again, you can do a search for ChatGPT and that will also um, bring you up the website. Perfect, thank you. Um, next question, uh, would you be able to one more time go over the process of putting an image into the Bard prompt and having it, uh, well, the, the question is extract text or other information from the image. So maybe if there's an image you can grab with uh, a little bit of text on it as well. Yeah. So I can pull up the screenshot that I took earlier. So it was just this screenshot of, um, you know, one of the paragraphs from the space picture article. Oh, and so, sorry to interrupt, John, but oh, we right. actually we actually can't see the screenshot because you're just sharing your web browser window. But there we'll we see go. it when you paste it in there. Okay. So, well, this is the screenshot that I was seeing. Um, I pasted it in before, but what I can do is just go here and then paste it into here. Um, so I just saved that to my downloads folder, and then now let's um, switch back to Bard and I will upload image and see it's giving me um, a little information about the privacy of that. And then I will go back to my downloads and I've just selected the screenshot file. So you can see it's just down here. And then I can ask it to please extract the text from this image. And then after it thinks that for a couple seconds, um, it will extract the text that we got from this image right here. You see, um, this is our image. And this is the text that it was able to extract from that. And uh, interestingly, I see that it also has a text description where it gives um, a not wholly accurate description of what the image is. It's, it seems to think that it includes an image of a of a protoplanetary disk. Which is so. Just a reminder: this is not a one hundred percent accurate service at all times. Um, so keep a lookout for things that don't quite match up. Right. Yeah, the image describes that, but it does not show a picture of this protoplanetary disk. All right. Uh, next up, someone wants to know if I use ChatGPT or Bard for help with a first draft and then edit it using my own words, would this be considered AI assisted writing? Uh, yeah, that would be considered AI assisted because, you know, the AI is helping you with formulating ideas or structuring your paper. Um, yeah, as long as you're not using you know, direct copy paste of the responses from this. It isn't like plagiarism or anything, but that would be uh, AI assisted writing. All right. Next, uh, do both AI interfaces have voice input? Good question. So yeah, that's something that I didn't get to mentioning, but Bard does um, have an option to use microphone here. So what you can do is click on this and then speak your prompt and it will do speech to text to 
you know, understand the words that you're saying and then use that as your prompt. Chat GPT, I don't believe at the moment it has microphone functionality on the website. I do know that Chat GPT has a mobile app, which will allow you to speak a prompt in the same way that you can do it on Bard. Um, but yeah, at the moment, I don't believe the website for Chat GPT supports that feature. Okay. Uh, next question. Do these tools work well in Spanish? Yeah, great question. Um, one of the things that Bard mentioned, and I know ChatGPT is good at this too, is its ability to translate between languages and work well in other languages. I don't personally speak Spanish, so I can't personally vouch for how well it works, but I have heard that it functions in Spanish um, well as well. Yeah, and in, in my experience, the only thing I'll add to that is in my experience, it's a pretty good translating tool as well. In fact, it even, um, unlike something like Google Translate, it actually uses the context and kind of idiomatic speech uh, and translates that to a different language better than just a one-to-one -one literal translation of words, which is pretty cool. Okay, next question. Uh, how do we clean up the chat history? Okay, so... Um... Two interpretations of that question. If you're talking about just this middle window, you want to restart the chat and open up a new one. That'll just be this new chat button. It's in the top left, both for Bard, or if we switch over to ChatGPT here, it's this new chat button. And when you click that, it just clears out everything and lets you start fresh. Um, if you're talking about the history of chats that you have on the left side here, like let's say this, um, I don't know, this James Webb taste, James Webb Space Telescope 1 isn't a chat that I want to save anymore. I just want to delete it. You can also click on the three dots here and select delete. And then after you confirm that you want to delete it, this is a way to remove that chat from this recent history. And similarly on ChatGPT, you have a similar option, I believe. Yeah, when you click on it, you can click on these three dots and delete chat the same way that you did on Bard. So depending on if you meant the chat in the middle or the history of previous chats, that's the ways that you can clear those two different things. All right, thank you, John. Uh, we have a lot of good questions still. I don't think we're gonna be able to get to all of them, unfortunately, but we can do a couple more before we have to start wrapping up. Um, so I'm going to choose my favorite uh, of the ones that I see in here, which is do the quality of your questions matter? Uh, the more specific your questions are, are the results better? Yeah, great question. And generally, yes, the more specific you can form your question, the better it'll be able to answer. Even if you ask a really vague question, it'll usually give you some sort of information. But obviously, if you don't give it any specifics to go on, it isn't going to be able to tell exactly what you're looking for. So it might give you information that isn't useful to you or just give you information that's so broad that you know you would have either already known that or it isn't helpful for what you're looking for. Excellent. Okay. And then um, we'll do two more. Uh, so the next question I see is, can you use uh, one of these services for marketing? For example, can you ask it to make a list of head librarians of public libraries around the country or, you know, something similar and, uh, you know, um, kind of compile a list of people that way? Yeah, great question. Um... If you wanted to make a list of specific people, that's probably something that'll be better suited to Bard as it has access to the internet. But we can give it a try and just see if, um, you know, making a list of head librarians, uh, something it can do. I imagine it'll generate a list of a bunch of people. And, you know, this is something that you definitely want to fact check and make sure that these are all actually librarians of these um specific libraries, but we see here, it did give us a list of a bunch of different head librarians of libraries. So that's totally something that you could use this for. Fantastic. All right, and this is gonna be our last question. So I apologize to everybody who uh, we didn't get to, um, but you're welcome to come in and ask us questions about these services uh, live one-on-one -on -one at the Central Park Library Tech Center. Anyway, last question, John, uh, according to most people or just according to you, which is better? Sorry. Chat GPT or Bard? Yeah, so that question has a lot of nuance to it and some personal feelings. 
the general consensus though is that chat gpt is a slightly better model so it's like able to understand your questions better and its responses will be a little bit more specific to what you're asking it um and bard you know might you know get some information wrong or answer your question in, in a wrong way and misinterpret it but then the flip side is that bard also has access to the internet and current data and stuff that chat gpt doesn't so a lot of it depends on the use case um Personally, I'll switch back and forth between the two. If I need to ask it something that would reference current information, I'd use Bard. But if I just want general, like maybe creative writing advice or something that doesn't require internet access or up-to-date information, I might use ChatGPT for that. Uh, and you can also you know, try out both as well because they're both free services that you can use and see which one that you like better. Another difference is that you know, with what I showed with the editing messages and being able to go back and forth between the two, that's something that ChatGPT does better. So that's why I tend to like using that one for most day-to-day -day stuff that I use this for. Perfect. Thank you for that last answer. And that is going to do it for our Q&A. So um, I'll throw it back to you, John, to start wrapping up the class. Yeah, so thank you everyone for coming. I hope you learned a couple of things about BARD and ChatGPT. Uh, again, I wanna remind you that the Tech Center is open at the Central Park Library whenever the library is open. So you can come in and ask your one-on-one -on -one questions about BARD, ChatGPT, or any other technology-related questions. Um, we're gonna be hosting more technology classes in the future. So you can go to the library website to learn more information about that. Um, you can go there. I'll show you real quick. It'll just be sclibrary.org. And you can hover over calendar and go to events if you want to look at the calendar of all of our events, or if you wanted to be notified by email for any future events. When you open up the website, you'll see this little window in the bottom corner where you can enter your email address and click this subscribe button. And that will allow you to choose which events you'd like to be notified for when we schedule new ones in the future. Uh, one final thing is that there's going to be an exit survey that you'll see as soon as you leave the Zoom meeting. We'd really appreciate it if you fill that out as it helps us plan future events um, and make them better in response to your feedback. And then finally, this meeting or this class, it will be recorded and uploaded to the YouTube channel in the next couple of days. And you'll receive a link to that in your email that you signed up with when that's ready to view. Excellent. And uh, sorry, John, one more thing on the topic of the exit survey. If you don't have time to fill that out right now, we actually do have that on the library website now. So if you mouse over the services button up at the top, and under public computers and printing, just underneath services where it says technology class requests. If you click on that, that's gonna take you to this page where it gives you basically the same brief survey that you would fill out after one of these classes. You can fill us out anytime if you want to give us ideas for our future classes. We love to, you know, we give these for, for you, our public, so we want to know what it is you want us to, to do. And that's all yeah. I have. Yeah. Once again, thank you everyone for coming. I hope you enjoyed and stay tuned for future technology classes that we're hosting.